Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. This is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I, and my guest chef is Marty Schultes. <laughs> and I'm very excited because we're doing this during the holidays, right, Marty? Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. uh, we're doing a ragu, basically, or spaghetti dish that doesn't have garlic. Oh. I couldn't believe I found this. <laughs> so I want to give the ingredients, or would you like to give the ingredients? I can do that. Do That's that. Fine. Go okay. ahead. So what we're going to have is one small onion peeled and put it in half, um, one small carrot peeled, one stick of um, celery, extra virgin olive oil, kosher salt, ground pepper, of course, um, one pound of ground beef, 80-20, um, a half a cup of tomato paste, three-fourths a cup of white wine, two cups of chicken stock, a cup of milk, and a pound of a long pasta. So those are all the ingredients that we're going to be using today as we mix this up. Right, so what we're doing first is, I've already, instead of doing this in a grater, Marty, um, I grated the carrots first, and I chopped the celery, okay? And then we're going to use the 360 cookware, which is right behind us in the skillet, and mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to brown it. We're going to brown the onions, right? And I'm cutting those up. And then we're going to let that get really translucent, and then what we'll do is we'll t bring and put the ground beef. I think that's what the directions say mm -hmm. that you have to do. Right. We're going to get these soft. So that's it's going to smell like right. Thanksgiving morning when you put the, yeah. the celery and onions yeah, together. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> this reminds me. This is the first year I hadn't t didn't have to do Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and But my sister-in-law did, so... All I had to do was the mashed potatoes for 10 people. Oh. And I made some cranberry bites uh, oh. on our last show, right? And I got to tell you, it they turned out delicious. Mm. Now, what else are we doing? We're doing another one. You want to tell us what we're doing on here while oh I just God. chop these onions okay. up? So the next one we're going to do is um, a grilled pork. Um, and I believe you've marinated this already. Um, the pork, she's got some nice pork rounds um, with lime juice. It looks like and I it calls it. for garlic minced, but we're not using that because Catherine doesn't like garlic. <laughs> yeah, they can't eat garlic. <laughs> doesn't like her. Um, some olive oil, um, some ground cumin, some oregano, and some pepper. And again, she's got that all together, and she's already got the spices and everything on the pork, kind of marinating it, getting soaked into the pork. And then they're going to grill that up once once we get that grilled up. And then you use a, a chutney over top of it. So Catherine's got this um, Mariana's. No, Marina's. Marina's pear ginger chutney. So we're going to try that, that with it. That looks really good. I love chutney on any kind of um, grilled like chicken or pork. I love chutney on top right. of it. It just we, brings that sweetness out. And we added wine to that recipe. Mm. We actually added a, um, a cup of white wine. Oh, okay. Right, because I thought it would give it a really nice flavor. So mm. the next thing we're going to do right here, Marty, mm. is we're going to add two tablespoons. And Bill's going to come over here, and I'm just going to put this on here. Unless, Bill, you want me to, unless our producer wants me to put it over here, because usually what he does is he does it like this. He stands there. You stand over here with me, okay. and we'll do it, okay? All right. So ahead, get that in there. Yeah, so... Actually, Marty's going to get to do all the appetizers, which I'm really... Yep. And it doesn't actually... It doesn't take long to do this. And so... And actually, with the 360 pans, you don't have to put it on high. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get those onions in a minute. And we are... We have one of our wonderful things right here right. that we don't have to do anything except this. Father came over to see us, and he's going to be doing his 
a television show probably in January. And then we met a visiting missionary who loves to cook. Oh, wow. Who's wow. from here. And so what we're going to do is we're adding the carrots. All right, Bill, you're going to come over and get this, or are you okay where you're at right now? Right? He's going to be okay where he's at right now. So we're going to go ahead and add that in. Yes. And then we're going to let that kind of saute. Right. Yeah. You can always tell when celery um, gets pretty ready to be done. Um, it gets more translucent um, looking. It doesn't have that stiffness. Same thing like with onions, I think. Yeah. Um, I agree. Those are such go-tos in, in cooking, I feel like, just onions and celery. Um, I, I just think they're such go-tos to add so much flavor to things. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what we're doing, the, the skill is really getting really hot now, and we're sautéing this. And you do it until it gets translucent or around five minutes. So we're going to set the timer for five minutes. There we go. And within five minutes, it'll be good enough for us to take it out. Mm -hmm. And then what, I'm not gonna wipe the skillet out because there's still a little bit of oil in there. Yeah. And so, if you'll open this for me, Marty. Sure, I'd will. appreciate it. And we're gonna, we're gonna cook that. But I decided instead of using a slow cooker today, we're gonna do everything in the skillet. Put the top on. This is the nice thing about the 360 cookware. It seals everything in. Uh, and it locks, which makes it nice. What are you making for us for the rest of the meal, Marty? So I've got a spinach dip that I'm going to be making, and then I've got... Why don't you come over here? Okay. okay. I've got a spinach dip, and then I've got a tomato appetizer with goat cheese in it, and then the other one I've got is a um, just real quick, easy cucumber with a um, dip on top of it with a tomato on top of it. Things that people can just pop in their mouth, um, you know, not anything super heavy because, you know, when you're having a nice big meal, you don't want anything super heavy. But people are hungry when they get to your house, you know, and they want to eat something. That's right. Um, so it makes it just a really nice, you know, spread ahead of time that it's not going to fill anybody up. Um, and it'll just taste really well. good. And, you know, so. the other thing is we're making a um, spicy Italian salad, mm. which I'm really excited about. And for dessert, you know, what I would do for dessert is do a spumoni, or mm. I would do, let me get back here a minute. Yep. Um, I, do, I would do a spumoni or a nice um, ice cream or something, something simple. Mm -hmm. um, what would you do? Because you don't want anything heavier than the stuff that we're making. No, I even think just even some fruit and some dip would be good yeah, too sometimes. Yeah, that would be good. Um, especially when you have a heavier meal and you've already got appetizers, there's mm -hmm. really not a need to you know, um, right. do a whole lot extra. It's like Thanksgiving dinner. Everybody loves the desserts, but after Thanksgiving, they're like, oh, I can't I eat can another thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, what my sweet husband did is he went out and got this huge pumpkin pie. Oh. It's about this big. Oh, wow. We're still eating on it. Yeah. And, but it's delicious. Yeah. So anyhow, but we're going to be able to taste this. You're going to be able to take some stuff home today. And which I'm really excited about. And so the next thing you want to tell me what we do next. Um, I take this out and put it in something okay. and put it aside. Correct. Okay. So once that's all translucent, which it's getting there really quick, this pan is just beautiful. Um, then we're going to go ahead and it asks for some more olive oil with this, but I don't know with these I don't pans, think we I don't it. think we're going to need it. Right. Um, ground beef itself has, has some, you know, right. fat in it anyway. We're going to go ahead and add the meat, break it up, just fry it up a little bit. And we're not putting we're gonna, it in a slow cooker. We're going to leave it in the yeah, skillet. Yeah. And then we're just going to add the tomato paste to it. Uh-huh. Um, keep and it on low. And, and the stock? The stock and the wine onto it then. And then um, once that's all set, then we'll add that pasta in and cook it really slow. Okay. We'll get this finished yeah. in a second. It's fun the different kind of pastas they have out right now too. I'm always looking for the different different brands instead of the same old pastas that I grew up with. Um, there's so many just fun shapes um, anymore and just really good pasta. Um, so that's nice too. So um, we're gonna wipe this out for a minute. We're yeah. gonna take a short break and we'll be right back on the Chef You and I with Marty Schultes and myself, Catherine Raker. We'll be right back.
<laughs> we are back on the chef you and i with myself and marty schultes and i'm putting the ground beef in and here's a nice thing about it you know, put it in there all right we might want to add just a little bit of oil to that marty i'm not sure about it <laughs> but i've got to turn it down really low because this and i'm going to turn the fan on <laughs> or we are going to have there we go yep and I think I need to add a little bit of oil. Okay. Yes, okay. Here we go. Yep. There we go. All right. Let's get that ground beef cooked up really good. Yeah. And then when we do that, we're going to add all this other to it. Right. 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 We're back on the Chef You and I with myself and Marty Schultes, and the ground beef is already browned. We're going to add the tomato paste, and we're going to add the wine and the chicken stock, and then the milk. Right. So, so with that tomato paste, we want to get it mixed up really good and incorporated okay. in that ground beef. All right. So what we want to do is actually take this yeah. and mix it in with the ground beef. Right, yeah. Until it gets covered, right? Right, yeah, till And then... Just so all the ground beef has the tomato paste in it. Then we're gonna go ahead and... Add. We're gonna get that wine, go ahead and add it. And I've got a, um, it looks like three-fourths of a cup, I'm sorry, two-thirds of a cup of white wine. Right. So go we're gonna add that, that to it. In. And then we'll add the chicken stock in, I yeah. think. Is that next? Yeah. yeah. We might want to pull that up just a little bit to get that. Wait just a minute. I'm going to use so this right here to move it around. So we can reduce it down a little bit. Yeah. There we go. That's all nice and incorporated. Right. It's getting incorporated. All right. Really nice. And now we're going to add... Now we got the two cups of chicken stock. Go ahead. And I think you could also use like vegetable stock in this too. Doesn't if matter. you prefer to do vegetable stock, I think you could yeah. also do that. So we're going to add that. And then after that reduces a little bit. Right. We're going to reduce that a little bit. And then it. And then we'll uh, put the milk in. Then we'll put the milk in and we'll cover it. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Cover okay. it and let it go for a little bit. Get the, all those juices and everything reduced. Around down. five minutes maybe. I think that's what it says. When do you add the vegetables back in? That's going to go in after the milk and after it reduces okay. back down. And then we're just going to let it cook on the top of the stove slow, yeah. just like you would in a slow cooker. Mm -hmm. And here, we're going to get rid of this. Can you put that in the garbage yep. things? Got it. All right, and that goes in there. And so then we will, when that's done in about maybe 45 minutes, um, we'll come back to it. And they say use a slow cooker. We're doing a different method which makes it easier for us. Can I have some of that parsley? Because I'm going to add that parsley yeah. to it. There and you thank you. And add that parsley to it. And this is really going to be, this is more like a ragu than a spaghetti, mm -hmm. you know, situation. Because the actual, if you'll give me those uh, noodles. Okay, so we have these egg pasta papadel, papadel. Um, and um, we're going to use those. They're, they're really wide noodles that we're going to serve it on. So we're going to let that go for a few minutes, right? And then uh, we'll be right back in a little while. In just a moment, we'll be back, and we'll have all that ready and ready to add the milk to it. We'll be right back. We are back on the chef, you and I, and um, actually, uh, we just put everything into the pan. It's cooking slowly. You want to turn it down to practically nothing, so it'll cook, and pretty soon it'll be done. And then we'll be able to. We've got our water on for cooking our pasta. But in the meantime, um, Marty's going to show us how to do this wonderful um, bread. It's a spinach dip. It's yes. A, it's a spinach dip. So we're going to start off. We've got a beautiful nice round, row, round loaf of Italian bread. We're going to core this out, break that up so that's what people are going to use to dip into it. Do you want um, me to do that? That would be great, yeah. Okay. Just a serrated knife with it. 
Um, then I've got my other ingredients. I've got just a, um, a white onion, two cups of sour cream, spinach. This was frozen spinach. So the thing with frozen spinach is you have to um, unthaw it, which is running water over it, and then you have to squeeze out every bit of moisture in it because you don't want it wet. So mine is really pretty dry right now. Um, I've got some oregano. I've got some basil. I've got a little bit of thyme, and then I've got a mix of like a Lipton onion soup mix. You can also use a ranch with this if you prefer ranch um, base on a dip, but we thought, well, this would be a little bit different, so we're going to use a Lipton onion soup mix. So we're just going to take, and I'm going to take about half this onion here and chop it up so that um, we can get that into the mix and start mixing things up. Normally what I'd say, too, is when I do a dip like this, I kind of like to make it overnight and kind of let it sit and marinate in my refrigerator. If you don't have time for that, it'll be just as fine. Um, well, there, there it goes, the onion. Um, but um, I, I do like to let them sit for a little bit. And also, if you have too much dip, just put it in a bowl instead of in the bread bowl and um, save it for later. It's great with potato chips also. <laughs> and I love potato chips. I do too. So, That's my problem, Marty. Yeah, I, I'm a go-to potato chip girl. Not so much on the bread, but mm -hmm. I do like um, I do like chips with it. I just mm -hmm. want to get these a little, little diced up a little bit better. I am not the best with onions. Mm -hmm. So you have everybody coming for Christmas. You had everybody for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving's past now. Yeah. And... So Christmas is, and you know, all the holidays and yeah, Christmas New Year's Eve. Yeah, Christmas is a little bit easier for me. Yeah. Um, Christmas is, is just a little bit easier because I don't make a huge big meal on Christmas time. Usually we do a bunch of appetizers and things like that. I'm just going to use mm -hmm. my hands here and, and just shove this in. I think this is pretty well cleaned out for yeah, you. Yeah. Perfect. So, and you do want me to cube these, right? Right. Okay. You cube that as much as you can. Right. So I'm going to put the onions in. Um going to go ahead and get my sour cream in there. And this is two cups of sour cream. This time of year, I feel like sour cream and cream cheese and onions and things like that, those are my base. I always have to get those at the store no matter what. I always need to have some of that on, on hold just when I'm making things. So I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my powder stuff in before I put my, before I put my um, spinach in. Just so I can get that nice and mixed up. This needs to be broken up a little bit. Just a little bit. This was fresh basil, so mm -hmm. a little damp there. Just going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to chop this up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of this. Not a whole lot. Looks delicious, actually. This is also presents really well if you want to take this somewhere to a party. This, I think, presents really well. You can just put it on a nice charger plate with the bread around it. There we go. Just mix that all in. And I'm going to go ahead and just give this a stir. And then again, I'm just going to make sure my spinach is nice and dried and I'm going to break it up as best I can to get it into the dip so nobody's getting, um, nobody's getting clumps of it in there. Now, I have never tried to make this with fresh spinach, so I don't know how that would turn out. With the spinach? Yeah, I've never done it with fresh spinach. It's really good. I am. Um, and know that I, was frozen spinach, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I like fresh spinach in soups. I love fresh spinach in soups. Um, so we're going to get this all nice and in here. This will be a nice Christmassy green when I'm done. <laughs> Do you know what's really funny, Marty, is, is that I was making a lot of pumpkin pie desserts, and I could not find pumpkin pie spice. Oh. So what did I do? I went online, found a spice recipe, and I'm, ma I'm making my own spices now. Oh, wow. Because I'm finding that a lot of times we can't find them mm. because of the transportation situation going on in the States right now. Yeah, that's frustrating. And it's frustrating because if you've got, you know, especially during Thanksgiving, what we had to do, I had to go and so then I decided, well, I can do this easy. And it was really simple. Mm. And then I use those... Uh, Jars that you do uh, for 
uh, you know, like canning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they turned out really nice. All right. All mixed in. Notice I didn't put any salt in this because the onion soup mix has plenty of salt in it. If I were putting the ranch in it, I might do a little dab of salt in it just to bring some of the flavors out. But since I know that the Lipton has enough salt in it, I didn't add any into it. So we're going to yeah. go ahead and put Doesn't this that look good? in our, our cool little bowl here. Okay, so this presents really nicely if you're going to a party or you just love your family so much you just want it to look so beautiful for them. Right, right. I don't think this would make it to the bread bowl with my children around. I think that all my kids and, and everybody would just start dipping right into the bowl. Right. There we go. All right. All right. Beautiful. And Do you then, want to add a little bit more sour cream into that or not? Nope. I think we're good. I you think, think we're looks, good? I think we're this gonna, looks good. Okay. We're going to take a little short break and we'll be yeah. right back on the Chef You and I with Marty Schultes and myself, Catherine Raker. We're back on the chef, you and I, and Marty is making the second appetizer, which is? It's cucumber bites. A very simple recipe to make cucumber bites. Um, again, something light and easy for people to pick up. I went ahead and started with my cream cheese, and I got this a little uh, melted in the microwave. I just It has to be able to be smushed up and not in chunks. So I'm going to put this in my bowl here. I must have got a piece of dill in there. Um, Put this in my bowl here and then to this we're going to add some sour cream this was one brick of cream cheese oh, get me a spoon out here and then i'm going to use about about a cup of sour cream not maybe a full cup but just about a cup um, and get that incorporated in here um, this, the cream cheese, whenever I use cream cheese or anything, it kind of gives it a thickness to it, which will be nice because we're going to pipe it on top of these cucumbers then. Can I uh, give that um, wonderful uh, thing that you peel you things with? Peeler? Yeah, I think I, I want to so. peel it a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add my sour cream in. And again, we're going to use about a cup of it. There we go. And I'm going to eyeball this. I think after you cook for so long, you get a good feel for what a cup is um, and what, you know, what you think it'll be. And honestly, it's not going to make a difference if it's a little under or a little over. It'll all taste good. Again, I want to go ahead and get this mixed up in there because it's a thicker mixture. Right. Kind of the base for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and add a packet of ranch dressing. This is great on small little potatoes, too. My family loves that. Just take some small potatoes and half them and then add them with ranch and a little bit of oil and bake them. Oh, they love those. All right. Nice and mixed up. So now let's give it a little kick here. Um, this is chives, so we're going to go ahead and get some chives in there. And this, I will say, you want to just cut tiny, tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. And there is a real difference um, between using green onions and chives. Chives just have a deeper flavor, I feel like, than green onions do, or regular onions do for that matter. It's nice to be able to get really fresh ones, though. Mm -hmm. And you can grow them, you know, in your, in your home during the wintertime. I have to tell you the story about our rose bush. Um, somebody gave me a, a miniature rose bush for, oh, they can't, for a gift, right? And so all winter long, last year, I put it in the window, and it was doing really well. So this summer, I decided to take it outside. And you're not going to believe, when I show the pictures on our Facebook, what it looks like today. Oh. It's this huge rose bush. Oh, wow. I can't even believe it. So, <laughs> anyhow... Rose bushes are funny like that. I had a rose bush in an old house I was in. Uh -huh. And I thought that I had taken it down to the bottom because it wasn't where I wanted it. And I didn't yeah. really like it. 
This rose bush came back every year. I couldn't kill this thing. It's like, you must have had great roots in you. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it likes the side of my house for some reason. Mm. And I've been using coffee grounds with it because I always used to do that with my rose bushes. Mm. And yeah. I just thought it comes out much nicer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My mom used to take the dishwasher. The right. dish, you know, after you got done washing the dishes, she would take that water out and throw it over her roses. She said, it "Really? Got the, it got all the bugs in that off of That's it." That's a it good cleaned, idea. It cleaned the leaves. I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, that looks great. Very easy. Very very easy to do. So we're going to pipe these. Yeah, I'm going to try the piper thing here. I'm not the best at piping, but we're hey. Gonna, well, all we can do is try, right, Marty? Go ahead and put this in there. Okay. The tomatoes we're going to use for the garnish on the top. So we're going to do that. Now, you assured me that this was easy peasy lemon yes. squeezy. Right, I know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. I'm like, okay, all right. You heard it here. It's yeah, supposed right. to be an easy one. Yes. All right, Catherine. Okay, that's enough. You don't want to put any more in there. All right. No, you got to put the top on. Right? All right. Okay. Now, you got to do it. Wait a minute. Let's put I'm gonna let Catherine do the piping here. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> and then I'm going to get the tomatoes ready for just a little bit of garlic. All right, let's on try them. this. Let's try this one. Yeah, have you ever noticed the prettier something Whoops. is, the, the faster it goes at a buffet? I'm trying table. it here first. Okay. I can't do this. Oh, whoops. Look what happened. Uh-oh. She's got a little bit more than she bargained for there. Yeah, there's like whatever. Hold on. And, hold this a minute. Okay. This is like a Lucille Ball and Debbie Arnaz or <laughs> Ethel thing. <laughs> maybe All not right. quite so much. Maybe huh? just a maybe Try just it. a dollop. Just a dollop. Okay, see you did it. You're right. This is not as easy as you think. Yeah, that's what I told you. It's like icing a cake and making stars. Yeah, I know. I kind of have to use. I think that one needed a little bit more, girl. We'll this just looks really this. sharp. We'll do these rows and uh -huh. see how we go. Yeah, we have a lot of this, Marty. All right. Let me try one. Oh, there you go. You do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut some little tomatoes up. You could garnish these with peppers. You could garnish these with pieces of carrot. You could garnish these with just about anything you want. Um, it just adds a little bit of color to it. So we're going to just. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. This is fun to do. Absolutely fun. Right. Look at that one. Okay. You could actually, it's, it's harder than you think to push it. That's the only thing that I found is that it is, yeah. right? I think if I serve these out, I would probably do carrots and purple onions and really and, and just, I'd make it colorful. I think that would be really pretty to make it really colorful or different color peppers. Wait, wait, Oop. there All you right. go. All right. And or smoked salmon, maybe. If oh, you, there you but go. But see, I know you don't like so. I don't really no. eat fish, so. No, but so. yeah, absolutely. Here's uh -oh. this one. Watch, 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 watch. Let's I have to check we've out. We've got our pasta going back yes, here. I think it's I going crazy. And I think it's done. We have to hit the timer. It's yep. done. Yep, there we go. So that's it. Oh, missed one. So we're going to. We're going to take the pasta out in a second. All right. So that's an easy peasy appetizer. It's light. It tastes good. You can top it with different things. It could be really colorful, really cute for Christmas time, whatever. Right. Um, pop one in your mouth. All right. We'll be right back after these important messages on The Chef You and I. We are back on The Chef, you and I, and we're making the spicy Italian salad. And Marty and I are doing this together. So I have to cut up 
the lettuce and you're going to do what? Right. So I've got all these ingredients. Let me just kind of go through them as we get through here. The first thing was artichoke hearts and it's asked for them to be chopped up. So I'm going to take some of these, not particularly all of them, and chop up artichoke hearts, which are a little bit tougher than I would think they yeah, would be. Yeah, they thick, right? Yeah. Right, so the, this is going to be five cups of salad. Right, yeah. And we're using romaine lettuce. lettuce. Yeah. And I think you could use romaine or you could use iceberg. Um, those are my two favorite kinds of lettuce. You know, the sad thing about iceberg is it has no value. Yeah. So there's so many new lettuces now, Marty, that are um, leaf lettuce and there's red lettuce. Yeah. I love arugula. Do, do you, you like it? No, I do not like arugula. <laughs> right. I'm going to go ahead and cut up a red onion here. Good. And just get that in there. Again, not so overpowering. Just, just a little bit. You're boiling back there. This is done. Now you can take yeah. it off. See, that's the nice thing about these wonderful... Um, uh, beautiful uh, pan that reduced really nicely yeah it looks gorgeous and it's you know it's uh, it's gone down so it looks wonderful so anyhow all right. you're all done with that almost yep we'll get this done that looks gorgeous so we thought with all these different ingredients we'd go ahead and get these mixed up first and then we'll add it all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get the red onions in and then the only other thing I had to chop up really was Cucumbers. We're going to use some cucumbers and chop these up. Great. All right. And I can't have to put you good. to work. I'm going to have you chop those up nice and fine. Okay. Some red peppers. This too would be a beautiful salad to take somewhere because it, oh, is, it is gorgeous. Very colorful. Yeah. Very, very colorful. And especially, you know, for, and you know, I make, and I do this every year, I make my Swiss cheese dip. Everybody loves it. You remember that. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's really good. All right. Going to go ahead and just get that all mixed in now. All right. Here's the other ingredients that we're going to go ahead and put in this salad. We've got grated carrots. That's about a cup of grated carrots. Got some nice green olives with pimento in them. Some black olives. Whoop. Making a mess of it. All right, I want to go ahead and get this is Romano cheese, so we're going to go ahead and get that mixed in. Some dry mustard, just a little bit of dry mustard. I think that's about a table, teaspoon of dry mustard. All right, then we've got some, I'm not sure what thyme. Thyme, oh, I'm so sorry, thyme. We're going to put some thyme in. Can I put that in there? Yes. Okay, go ahead and put that in. All right. Beautiful. Wait, I'm right. done. A few more? Yeah. Okay. That's good. So then to make the, the salad dressing as such, we're going to put some sugar in because that's going to offset with a little bit of vinegar. Just some plain vinegar that we got in there. And then this is just plain canola oil. This is a half a cup of canola oil. We're going to go ahead and get that all mixed in there real pretty. Smells very Italian-y. Yeah, I know. I figured it if you can have a smell for Italian-y, that's what it smells very Italian-y. All right, so these are all nice and mixed in. Now, my preference would probably be to put more cheese in it myself, but, you know, to each their own. All right, go ahead, and I'm going to put, put that over here, and then I'm going to mix this in. That this is do you want nice. those? Wait a minute, I've got something for you, Marty. Where are they? They're right here. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is not your everyday salad. This is nice to bring, again, to a party because it's not your everyday. And it's called spicy Italian salad. Yeah, and then I. Uh, Right. Again, my preference would be probably to just sprinkle cheese on you the outside of You could still put some more cheese on top of yeah, that. Yeah, I would definitely put some more cheese on top of this. Right. That looks really delicious. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. 
So uh -huh. simple to make. You want to put it over there, Mark? Yep. There we go. All right. Sweet. So. We are back on the Chef You and I, and this is the part I love, Marty. This is when we get to eat. <laughs> um, actually, uh, we made a, a ragu, actually, mm -hmm. Italian dish with meat and vegetables, right? Mm -hmm. And then tell us what you made. Okay, so we did a nice spinach dip with a um, just a round loaf of bread. We did some easy cucumber pickup bites with um, ranch and cream cheese, and then just a little bit of topping of tomato. And then that's our spicy um, Italian salad. It's got everything in it, artichoke hearts, olives, um, peppers, carrots, onions, just about everything. And but then we use for the dressing, we use um, oil, vinegar, and some sugar. And that it makes it wonderful. It's it a wonderful really dish for in between the holidays because you can only eat so much turkey, so much ham, <laughs> you know, so you can yeah. have something totally different. Right. And right. this could be even a brunch kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I want to yeah. thank you for, for uh, being here today. We want to thank all of our sponsors, which um, are the 360 uh, cookware pans and also uh, corn huskers duck fat spray. We want to thank everyone for joining us today. And Marty, yeah. bon appetit. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.